Hi, in this video I'd like to show some enhancements to illuminated cloud support for Apex Doc. If you're not familiar with Apex Doc, it's an integrated API documentation mechanism very similar to what you find in other languages, uh, Java Doc, ES Doc, JS Doc, those types of things. Uh, it's effectively based on what are called documentation comments, which are very similar to block comments, the contents of which are a lightweight form of HTML, very simple HTML markup syntax, and a simple uh, metadata tag syntax for identifying things like uh, method and constructor parameters, uh, return values, uh, cross-correlation information, uh, author date information, things like this. Illuminated Cloud's actually had support for Apex Doc for quite a while. Uh, however, with this set of enhancements, uh, it gets uh, quite a bit more support, especially in terms of uh, validation and formatting and things like that. Uh, why don't we jump into the settings first so I can show the categories of new features and then we'll actually walk through the demo. So going into the settings and going into code style for Apex, uh, under the Apex Doc tab, uh, there are quite a few more options than were here before. Uh, previously, uh, Illuminated Cloud would automatically uh, stub an Apex Doc comment for you if you type slash star star and, and hit enter, if this option were enabled, generate Apex Doc on slash star star. Uh, and it would uh, look at the associated declaration, if it had parameters or a return type or things like that, it would add the appropriate tags. But other than that, the only uh, way that it participated uh, in formatting, that Apex doc participated in formatting, is the documentation comment would get indented properly uh, based upon the formatting specification. Uh, but this actually adds full content formatting. So let's take a look. Now, one thing I want to point out immediately is that uh, the formatter for Apex Doc is not enabled by default after you update. Uh, this is actually an application of the principle of least surprise. For people who have uh, already implemented quite a bit of Apex Doc based documentation, I don't want a, a huge set of formatting changes to get mixed in uh, unintentionally or unexpectedly with logic changes. So uh, anybody that's doing Apex Doc formatting, or really anybody, just enable this as soon as you get it and isolate your Apex doc formatting changes to their own uh, check-in, their own commit, uh, just as you will with any other formatting change, so that logic changes and formatting changes uh, are, not, are not mixed together, so it's easy to see when a, log when a logic change has occurred. Uh, this option already existed. Do you want it to automatically generate an Apex doc comment when you type slash star star and enter? Uh, I'll show that in a little bit as well as another way to do the same thing. The next has to do with the way that you end a documentation comment. As I mentioned, a documentation comment starts with slash star star, as opposed to a block comment that starts with slash star. Uh, and uh, there are multiple schools of thought on this. Uh, should a documentation comment end uh, in a symmetrical way, and we can see that in the preview down here that that just updated, with a star star slash, should it end as a standard block comment? Uh, if you choose one of the first two options, the formatter will actually adjust all existing doc comments to your setting. If they're already that, you won't see any change, but if there's a mix or if you're uh, wholesale changing from one to the other, it will adjust all of them, which again can have a large ripple effect across your code base that really is uh, more about formatting and less about uh, logic or intention. Uh, so there are two other options, which is whenever you're reformatting uh, an existing doc comment, use whatever its ending is, don't, don't change it. But for new doc comments, whether they're generated uh, using slash star star enter or using the new code intention, I pr do you prefer star slash, a block comment end, or star star slash, a doc comment end? It's up to you. The default is going to be use existing prefer a, a block comment end. Uh, you can also decide whether you want the uh, additional lines indented uh, under the first column or if you want a vertical column of stars starting with the first star. Uh, you can uh, de decide whether you want intermediate uh, white space in between the various blocks of tags, the description text and then the params and then the return tag, things like that. Uh, I personally like to have uh, each section uh, kind of isolated with some intermediate white space. Uh, I think it makes it more readable when you're in the, uh, the code itself. Um, this does not convey through in any form to the rendered HTML that gets formatted uh, using tables and such. But within the code, this just uh, uh, works better for my eyes. But if you prefer a more compact representation, you can turn off any or all of these and actually uh, get rid of the intermediate lines. Uh, older versions of Apex Doc, the original version of Apex Doc, required that the description text be specified as the value to an at description tag, similar to this. 
Uh, there's a newer version of Apex Doc called SF Apex Doc that actually has several other enhancements. But uh, one of the most pleasant ones, in my opinion, is that it no longer requires an, at, an explicit at description tag. Basically, all the information before any of the other tags is considered description text. This is very similar to what happens in other languages' uh, internal documentation mechanisms. Uh, however, if you wish to be more strict uh, regarding the original Apex Doc implementation, you can say require at description tag and it will uh, automatically reformat to include that. Any uh, newly created Apex doc comments will include it. And uh, as we'll look at in just a moment, the static code analyzer will, will check it as well. By default, that's disabled so that your description text is everything before the first tag. And then the, uh, the next part has to do with uh, the fact that this is uh, basically lightweight HTML. If you had these two sentences and there was no intermediate tag specifying a line break or a paragraph break, uh, even though it looks like separate paragraphs, they would actually get concatenated together as two adjacent sentences in the same paragraph. Uh, it's just the nature of HTML that it consumes white space unless there's a specific uh, break directive. And so you can have the formatter look for this type of situation and automatically add paragraph breaks for you so that the HTML that is rendered from this information actually models the intention of the uh, way it's formatted in the original uh, Apex doc comment. Uh, note that any text in between uh, pre and slash pre, so pre-formatted text, uh, will not have these added because uh, intermediate blank space lines are, uh, are properly conveyed in the pre-formatted text. All right, so uh, the formatter has these. The only thing you can't really do is change the ordering of the major blocks of tags. Um, the order is prescribed here with description being first and then everything following as you see here. Uh, and then the second set of enhancements have to do with validation. Uh, I've actually been adding a lot of static code analysis to Illuminated Cloud recently and this is uh, a fairly comprehensive set of uh, static code analysis rules for Apex doc content. And so uh, for each tag type, there's a set of rules. Uh, if you had said that description tags are mandatory in the formatting rules, then here you would also want to say check for missing description tags and that would actually be flagged as a warning. Everything here is gonna be flagged as a warning because there's nothing here that would keep things from compiling when you send it to Salesforce servers. Uh, for the param tags, I'm not gonna go through these exhaustively, but at a high level, if you're missing param tags, but you have formal parameters in the method signature or constructor signature, uh, that can get flagged. If you have param tags with no names, that can get flagged. If you have named params, but you haven't uh, describe them. You haven't actually said what their meaning is, which by the way is an important part of this documentation. That can get flagged. If the order of the param tags doesn't exactly match the order of the formal parameters, that can certainly lead to confusion in the render documentation. That can get flagged. If the param tag uh, is unresolvable, things like that. Same with return tag. If you uh, are missing a return tag on something that has a return value, uh, that can get flagged. If you have added a return tag on something that shouldn't have it, like a void method, that can get flagged. If you haven't described the, uh, the meaning of the return value, that can get flagged. For your uh, cross-referencing information, your C tags, uh, you're supposed to specify a type and optionally a member within that type. So if you say C and you don't say any of that information, that can get flagged. If you say C and you specify something that uh, isn't resolvable, isn't real, that can get flagged just as it can within code. Um, optionally, if you want your C tags to have descriptions, you can decide to enable this. It's disabled by default. Very often, if you have good Apex doc on the target of the C tag, you don't need to describe the actual relationship. Uh, it, it's pretty obvious why you're building relationships between different documented entities. And then other metadata, like if you have an author tag without an author, a date tag without a date, things like that, those can get flagged. So, uh, so why don't we just jump into it and uh, actually show demos. So here's a class, and this class has uh, uh, a few constructors, a few methods, some of which have Apex doc, some of which don't. And as you can see, uh, the existing Apex doc has issues. Let's take a look at what some of these issues are. So we'll move to the first error. And we can see there are two issues here. We don't have a description for this parameter, so there's no way of telling the caller what the meaning is. And additionally, it says that the parameter is out of order. It says that it's uh, uh, supposed to be in the second parameter, but it's actually the first. And we can see that here. We can see that age and name, notice how they highlight, are reversed. We have age and name in the param list, uh, but in the formal parameter list of the actual method signature or constructor signature, it's name and then age. That can certainly lead to some confusion. In fact, if we bring up the documentation for this, we can see name, age, age, name. That's confusing to the caller. Uh, and we can also see that 
uh, we have specified a return value for a constructor. Now, a constructor does return a newly constructed instance of the type that you're creating, uh, but there's no explicit return statement. And at return tags and return statements are intended to be paired. So this is an invalid use of an at return. So now we can move on to the next set of issues. Uh, this says it can't resolve this uh, parameter name. And the next one says it can't resolve the symbol age. And we can see this is a no arg constructor. Uh, so it, it's understandable why those are unresolvable. Maybe this was a copy paste issue or something like that. Um, I've certainly been uh, guilty of this myself where I'll just take the documentation from one method, copy it to another, uh, change the parameter list. I don't update the uh, actual Apex doc uh, or, or Java doc and things get out of sync. Uh, well, this will point it out to you uh, very quickly. And then the next one that we see down here says that we have a method with a return value uh, and it doesn't specify what it returns. So we can actually see that the method returns a string, but there's no at return tag. So why don't we first just run the code formatter across this entire file? So we'll just go ahead and do that. And some changes were in fact made. And uh, let's just bring up version control and we can take a look at those changes. So uh, we can see on this one, we had specified we want white space between sections, between description and the param blocks. So we can see it added an empty line. We can also see that it reordered the parameters, name and age, to match the actual signature, and it got rid of the incorrect at return tag. On the next one, it got rid of the uh, incorrect at param tags because they don't correspond to actual parameters. And on the last one, it actually stubbed out an at return for us so that we could then describe the return value of this particular method that actually has a return value. All right, so let's undo that. As always, things are atomic. Uh, you can undo a, a reformatting. And let's see another way to do this. So I'm going to go to the first error, and I'm going to use Alt-Enter on Windows or Linux, uh, Opt-Enter on the Mac, to bring up the quick fixes. And there's a new quick fix cleanup, apex.comment. And I'm just going to have it reformat just this one apex.comment and apply its rules as it does. And we can see that while not everything's fixed, it took care of a lot for us. And the things that remain are it's saying, I haven't described this parameter. So we'll just say, this is the name. The next one says, the age. Okay, so I've just made that API much more clear by saying that the name is a name and the age is an age, but it got rid of the errors. Typically, you'd obviously, <coughs> excuse me, uh, provide much more descriptive text. Let's go to the next one. Cannot resolve this symbol. Cannot resolve the next symbol. Clean up apex.comment and that fixes those issues. Go to the next one. Missing return for a non void method. Clean up apex.comment. We get that. Still an issue, says the return description is missing, so we'll say it returns the name, and all the errors are now gone, or all the warnings are now gone. So I was able to go through and very quickly have the IDE fix what it could fix, and then the rest of the things are things where I, I actually need to provide real information, like description text. Um, so we have a couple of other places here uh, where we don't have Apex doc. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if I do slash star star and hit enter, it will stub out an Apex doc comment for me, which is great. Uh, there's another way to do that now, though. Uh, if we just go to the method and use the same uh, quick fix key, I can say add apex.comment to anything that doesn't have an apex.comment and it will stub out the same thing. And we can say the account. And in fact, let's add a relationship to account and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, add that. Now we have a cross correlating relationship to account. And in fact, let's break that. Now we can see that we have an unresolvable symbol. Again, this isn't flagged in red because it's not gonna fail compilation on the server, but it will show you clearly uh, here that your documentation uh, has, has a problem. So we'll go ahead and fix that. Let's go back up to the class. We'll do the same thing. At apex.comment, this is our apex doc demo class. And we'll go ahead and say at date, and you can see it's saying I don't have a value. So we'll say today. And we'll say at author, again, I don't have a value, Scott. All right, so that kind of takes care of that. Let's run the formatter one more time. And again, it'll take care of things for us. So it reordered author and date into their canonical ordering. It added intermediate space because the, I said to do that in the formatter. And similar down here, it added intermediate space between the param block and the reference block. Uh, so it took care of all that for us. Um, so hopefully this uh, makes it clear some of the enhancements that are available here. A formatter for Apex doc quite flexible options for that formatter, uh, and a lot of validation rules to make sure that the Apex doc that you write is, uh, is correct and it represents the code that it's documenting, and some, uh, some quick fixes and code intentions to help you produce Apex doc and fix Apex doc very quickly with the assistance of the IDE. So uh, if you're using Apex doc right now, I hope you find this to be extremely useful. If you're not using Apex doc, I highly recommend that you do. Um, you know, this is a great way to document your API, not just for others down the line, but for yourself. You know, I'm, 
assuming you're like me and at some point return to code that you wrote a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a couple of days ago, and you're like, I can't remember if this return value uh, could potentially be null or not, or what this input variable is intended to be. It, it's good to, to, to actually document our own uh, code that we write uh, for ourselves and for others uh, because it just makes maintenance that much easier. If you find any issues with this, let me know. And uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I, the last thing is everybody just stay healthy uh, and take care of yourselves. Thanks.